Let me bring you to an issue sort of closer to home here in the UK, although, of course, impacted by issues like if war in Europe widens, the impact in terms of refugees would be far greater. Dealing with migration, it's a massive, massive political issue here in the UK, as it was in Australia for many years. Um, do you believe that the British government, led by Rishi Sunak right now, has got the right plan in terms of the Rwanda flight policy, uh, in terms of changing the law to deal with the human rights uh, laws we're under, uh, the human rights courts in, in Europe? Do, do you believe we've got the right plan to deal with migration? Will it work? It, it's not my job, Julia, to give uh, direct instructions oh, to a on. friendly government. <laughs> but, but, I, but, I, but I can tell you what worked in Australia. First of all, you've got to ensure that people who come illegally by boat uh, never get the right to live permanently in Britain. Second, you've got to try to ensure that anyone who gets here uh, goes offshore. Uh, and I would be removing uh, through parliamentary action uh, the legal obstacles to sending people to Rwanda. And third, as far as is humanly possible, you've got to stop them getting here in the first place. Now, to me, it's pretty plain that the French are not doing enough to stop uh, the people smuggling trade out of French ports. Um, I think this is uh, really bad behaviour on the part of the French. Um, I, I think that, uh, frankly, uh, Britain should be able to look at sending boats back. Mm. Uh, let's face it, they shouldn't have left France in the first place. They had no right to leave France for Britain in the first place. Why shouldn't they be sent back? Now, that's what Australia did uh, with uh, boats illegally coming to our country from Indonesia. Uh, I think Britain needs to consider this as an option right now. Well, we shall see if uh, Richie Snack will be taking some of that advice and Emmanuel Macron as well. Just finally, I want to ask you about, I suppose, the battles involving woke ideology. Again, that's something you've spoken out about a, a number of times. We've got ongoing battles in terms of trans ideology in our schools, children being allowed to identify as cats and horses in the playground and in, in, the, uh, in the classroom. Uh, we, we have you know, battles over whether or not, you know, oh, women exist separately from an, uh, being a, I I suppose a figment of men's imagination on a Wednesday mm. afternoon or, um, or more than just wearing heels and a dress and a wig. Um, what do you think what do you think needs to be done for the mainstream sensible sane rational person who understands basic biological fact to stand up to a lot of this this woke um, ideology? Julia this is the modern madness it is absolutely the odd the modern madness the idea that uh, a man is a woman uh, just because he says he is uh, and with all of his men's bits can go into women's prisons and so on just because uh, of, of his demand. It's just wrong uh, and it should be called out and resisted and not for a second pandered to. This idea that kids at school can suddenly claim to be cats uh, and be given a bowl of milk or some damn thing. I mean, it's, it's idiocy. It's extreme idiocy idiocy and we're only in this position because frankly we've spent far too much time being too polite uh, to this kind of neo-marxist long march through the institutions of which these kinds of nonsense are, are the ultimate consequence. Do you think this government's doing enough to stand up to it? Look it's certainly vastly better than any conceivable Labor government would be uh, there's no doubt that the Labor, that Labor is vastly more captured by this uh, than any other party. Um, so, look, the Conservative government is doing many good things. I just uh, hope that they get to do more, not just over the next 15 months, but over the next 15 months and then a further five-year term of government. Tony Abbott, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Former Australian Prime Minister, Honourable Tony Abbott, thank you.